Hey, great to see you, you utterly singular collection of particles from the stars, which is what each and every one of you are. Beautiful. Welcome to this video called How to Stop Getting Short Stacked. And we want you to stop getting short stacked because in the words of Blackadder when he was fighting in the war and getting shot down in his plane, it is a distinctly boring situation to be short stacked. It's the worst situation in poker. You just have to sit there and hope for the best. You're powerless. And that's not what we want for you. We want you to be more in control, as in control as possible of your destiny in tournaments. So how do we do that? Well, I have to kill Father Christmas up front, I'm afraid. Um, I cannot stop you always being short stacked. You will sometimes end up very short stacked in a tournament. Every player on the planet does. However, if it's happening to you a lot, if you're spending a lot of your tournament life, and be honest now, have a little think about your recent tournaments, sitting there hoping for a good hand to get you out of a difficult situation because your stack is dwindling, then you need to take a look at your mentality, your approach and your execution with tournament poker. And you especially need to work on taking action before you get really short stacked. So five, count them, keys to doing that. Uh, the first of which is critical. You've got to have the right mindset and that is an active mentality. Active mentality. And what I mean by an active mentality, oh, mentality, that's a why. Um, what I mean by an active mentality is slightly different to an aggressive mentality. Another way to put it is a front foot mentality. A lot of players bias their thinking, consciously and subconsciously, too much towards survival in tournaments. Very natural thing to do. Social psychologists, behavioral uh, psychologists have discovered that we value something we already have twice as much as its true worth. We are inherently programmed to protect and hold on to what we have, but that doesn't help us in tournament poker. The reason is all of the prize money is in the first three or four positions, and if we just play to survive all of the time, the rising blinds will eventually kill us. It feels like by surviving, you're staying in the tournament, but actually you're signing your own death warrant in the tournament before you can ever get to the top few positions. So how do we counter that? We need a mentality which says, my job, your job, is to constantly look to accumulate chips all the way through the tournament, even as the blinds get bigger, right? So that is the mentality you need. How do you translate that into playing poker? Well, we'll talk about that in a second, but you need to get that mentality first. So what I mean by that is every time the action gets to you, you should be asking, can I take an aggressive action here that can win this pot? It's a really good trick to like, just prompt yourself that trigger question to stop autopiloting and thinking, oh, I don't have a good hand, I'll just throw it in the muck and change your mentality. Now I'm not telling you to become a maniac and just because you see an opportunity doesn't mean that you have to take it. But I will bet a substantial amount of money because I am a betting man that if you're not getting your results in tournaments, you're too much towards a survivalist mentality and not enough towards a chip accumulation mentality. Hard to say quickly. So that's the first step. The second step is to back that up by using fold equity. So use fold equity. You know there are two ways to win in poker. That's what makes this game special. You can have the best hand or you can make everybody else fold their hands. Again, if you're getting short stacked too often, my bet is that you are not making enough use consistently of making other people uh, fold their hands. You're not winning enough pots without showdown, especially in the middle to later stages of the tournament as the blinds rise. Because there's so much dead money in the middle, especially if somebody else has put a little bit in there as well, that uh, every time you win a pot without showing your hand, it's a massive plus in your uh, tournament um, prospects and your ability to not get short stacked. But you've got to actually put the chips in the middle to use that second way to win. Specifically, what I'm talking about is stuff like raising to attack the blinds and antis, re-raising to exploit people that are also trying to do that with hands they can't defend against you, playing aggressively post-flop, so being prepared to put all your chips in the middle when you have you know, a draw or some overcards or equity where you think you can get the other player to fold a decent amount and if they don't fold and they call, you still have good equity in the pot. 
So that's what I mean by using fold equity. And it ties into your mentality of looking for these opportunities. But if you're getting short stacked a lot, you're not doing this enough. So that's where you need to address your attention when you look to improving your game and your results. Another output of this is to move sooner in tournaments, move sooner. I do not mean uh, move tables or move to celebrate when you win. I like this particular maneuver, it makes me feel good. Um, nothing wrong with that. By move sooner, I mean there's a very good chance you're waiting too long to commit your chips. So if you are uh, feeling like you get short stacked a lot or you go card dead a lot, I will wager that you are missing opportunities to actually commit your chips correctly, oftentimes pick up the pot without showdown, or if you do get called, even with a better hand, still have equity where you can win the pot. You need to be moving sooner. So uh, look for opportunities to reshove a 20 big blind stack over an opening raise. Look for opportunities to open shove 14, 15, 16 big blinds with hands with decent strength when it's the right thing to do. Don't try and play small ball when you get under 20 big blinds as much. Doesn't mean you can never do it, but in general, you are almost certainly not committing your stack when you've still got a lot of leverage from that stack. If you have 16 big blinds, the average tournament deep into a tournament, let's say is a 30 big blind average stack. So it's very hard for most players to call your 16 big blind shove, for example. So making these little adjustments, and again, I'm not talking about shoving relentlessly, sometimes it's called for, but I'm not talking about taking every single spot. I'm just talking about making an adjustment so that you're prepared to commit sooner because you know it's the right thing to do, right? Survival is not gonna get you the big prizes. Now, two specific things to finish off that, uh, that you should go away and work on after this video if you wanna do better in tournaments and if you wanna avoid being short stacked. The first thing is to work on 15 to 25 big bind play. So 15 to 25 big blinds. This is the level I was just talking about where you have some leverage and some power in your stack, but you're not yet completely short stacked. Once you start getting under 15 big blinds and you're on that death spiral to 10 big blinds and less, it's lap of the gods time, right? You are hoping to get a good hand. You're hoping something happens. Here with 15 to 25 big blinds, you can still put some pressure on other players and you can still you know, take advantage of fold equity. The principal thing you're going to want to master is reshoving. So somebody open raises and you shove your stack in over the top of them, not necessarily with a premium hand. You're going to want to do this when the opening raiser has quite a wide range for that raise. So late position raisers or aggressive players that are opening a lot. Um, and you're going to want to do it with hands that have some strength, usually some high card strength, not complete trash, although occasionally you can get away with it. Um, and you really want to look at these spots and start to try and master this reshoving move, start to try and understand when you can just shovel in with 15 to 20 big blinds rather than make a small opening raise and actually get to grips with that. And what I would recommend you do is go through your last couple of tournaments if you've got hand histories online. If you haven't and you play live, then you want to start making a note of these spots as you go forward. But if you've got hand histories, look at when you've had this stack and just step through every hand you've had and ask yourself, did I miss an opportunity there? Did I miss an opportunity there? I'm not talking about finding 15 times you can reshove in a tournament. I'm talking about the two or three times that can make the difference. Because when you make a successful play with this move, you can add, you know, if you pick up the buys and antis, maybe 10, 15, 20% to your stack. If you pick up that and an opening raise, more than that. And these, these uh, spots are absolutely critical in stopping getting short stacked and doing better in tournaments. One last thing to finish off, which is a real shortcut that you should be employing, is to learn push fold, uh, learn push fold charts, learn push fold. So by push fold charts, I just mean uh, charts which show you uh, when you've got 15 big blinds or less and the action's folded to you, when you should move all in and where you shouldn't, when you should fold, right? So as we get shorter in blinds, the game becomes more mathematical and lots of very clever people have done lots of work to shortcut this for us and show us when we can shove from which positions with which hands. So you can just go and Google push fold charts right now. You'll get a few options, small differences between them, but don't worry about that. And it'll look a bit like the matrix, lots of hands and like charts and stuff. Don't worry about that. Um, start off very simple, maybe start with trying to learn 10 big blinds and what hands you can shove from what positions and then play a tournament session. Don't look at the chart, try and make your best guess based on what you learned 
and then go back and compare your decisions to the chart, you'll have made mistakes, you can correct them and keep doing that, right? And then expand your knowledge, do 12 big blinds, eight big blinds, whatever it is. This is a really great shortcut that there's no excuse not to do. It's got nothing to do with your poker ability, it's just a little bit of homework to make you make better decisions at the table. Now you can adjust these decisions a bit for table dynamics and which players are gonna fold and so on, but in general, those push fold charts are gonna be a real kind of lifeline for you in terms of making good decisions with a short stack. Now I want you to do all these things not to get there, but having the knowledge to capitalize and do the right thing when you get there is really gonna help your results. All right, I hope you've got value from this video. If you'd like some more help with tournaments, there's a link underneath where you can click through to our site, sign up, and I'll give you a free guide to playing the early stages of tournaments so you can build a big stack and never get short stacked in the middle stages because you've got some weaponry to take into those middle levels. Grab that right now if you've enjoyed this video. Also give us a like, uh, that really helps. And subscribe and we'll give you uh, more cool free poker help. In the meantime, leave me a comment. I love your comments and questions. That's where I get my ideas for what to do a video on next. So let me know what you need help with right now. Until then, enjoy your poker and run good because that's the hard part.